Um, so today's presentation, I gave it some thought as far as the content relative uh, content that would be interesting to share as far as uh, moment frame design. And as I researched a little bit more into the background, um, it became more and more interesting to me in the sense that uh, there was quite a bit of time that uh, the design community had envisioned a, a certain performance of a moment frame but turned out to be different. And so I'm going to spend some time in talking about the background here and a couple of the earthquakes and how they relate to our understanding of moment frames. And so many of our current provisions in the design of moment frame has been products of earthquake events. And so here we go. Um, one of the things that's interesting about our industry is that you know, unlike uh, writing a software where you can beta test your program and your code, we don't have that luxury with engineering and uh, structural engineering of seismic uh, buildings here. So we have to learn a lot from earthquake events. And in order to learn from the earthquake events, um, you know, we kind of have to go back and study that. And so starting off, um, kind of a quick little timeline here that I'll present on. Um, moment frame hasn't been a new type of construction. It actually has been around for quite some time, more than 100 years now, actually. But back then, um, it was a riveted type connection where you actually have built up members and they were connected using rivets. And so as uh, technology improved, uh, rivets went to bolted connection and then evolved towards welded connection. So in looking at the uh, significant earthquakes here in 1906, um, Richter scale hasn't been established yet, but they had estimated in looking at the information that the magnitude of earthquake for the San Francisco 1906 earthquake was about a 7.7 .7 to 7.9. Caused a great amount of damage, mainly after the fact with the widespread of fire. And there were some steel buildings. In this case, again, the steel buildings were riveted frames not so much the, um, the welded steel moment frame here. So that hasn't come into the picture yet, and it won't for several decades later. The Santa Barbara earthquake um, was a magnitude of 6.8, and again, the frame, steel frames um, still were ri riveted, and no welding or no welded moment frames just yet. Uh, there w it wasn't until about the 1930s, between 1930s and 40s, that the um, welding procedure started to come into the market. And so the Santa Barbara earthquake actually uh, was around the same time afterwards that the Uniform Building Code, code incorporated seismic design provisions and that's how they, they, they started recognizing that designers need to account and have a procedure for uh, seismic design. The 1933 Long Beach earthquake uh, showed that there's a lot of damage uh, from uh, non-ductile systems as you can see from the picture here the um, facade for unreinforced brick uh, structures does not hold up too well. And so those were the lessons that we were started to learn about seismic design is that uh, the building material, uh, in order for it to withstand the forces of seismic force, that they ha should have some ductility in there. 
So around this time, then, the state of California then started to implement and look at uh, regulating state buildings. And this is also about the same time, then, that uh, regulations for sc school design uh, started to be implemented. 